It started years and years ago, probably late 80s, early 90s, uh, with the JPM Foundation. And the idea was to, to uh, when the kids run away, they usually like to stay in abandoned houses. Uh, and in, in California, they're called squads. And they all, you know, there might be 30 of them in there. We're just watching each other's backs and having a safe place to go. And the idea was to buy the first hire inspectors to let the kids know what you're doing, of course, and not kids, the young people. And um, hire an inspector to inspect particularly the foundation of the houses once that is is sound everything else can be fixed and then I had uh, carpenters uh, donating their time and, and um, plumbers and, and roofers and, and drywall people and painters and, and electricians and every other kind of tree you can think of these people who are donating their time to train these kids on, on fixing up the house and this way they would learn a trade and something they could make a living at once they got of age and um, and then sell the house you know at, at a profit and buy more squats and, and continue like that and um, that was the basic idea of the whole, the whole thing, and, and um, you, you soon learn that you're breaking all kinds of laws. Um, particularly, harboring a runaway is is illegal, um, and you have truancy laws. The kids aren't in school. Um, just intercepting them at, at bus stops uh, or freeway exits or you know in nightclub alleys is, is illegal so that that was all started in, in New Orleans like I said many years ago and, and over the years off and on I've played with ways to Develop that basic idea into into uh, what I'm doing now. Um, it's almost impossible to help the kids without going to jail. You, you just can't. You can't do it. Even if you give them a bed and put them in a motel and pay for the motel, yeah, it's illegal. You're not allowed to harbor a runaway. <laughs> so you're playing with going to jail and all that stuff and and, and being heavily, heavily fined and, and people looking at you like, oh, there's the guy that harbors runaways and there's the guy that puts underage kids to work in, in abandoned houses. And so I went, of course, that failed. And I went to yeah, help an adult homeless people um, you're allowed to harbor you're allowed to pay for a motel room you're allowed to to give them a job but you can't do that with teams so that's that's how it all started and, and now it's wound up being a, a, a documentary on simply trying to get some laws changed and trying to raise awareness and, and and maybe somewhere someone some big shot will will see it and understand how unfair it is to these kids and so that's that's where we're at we're, we're in the middle of making a documentary
we're gonna we're gonna get going. I already have a bunch of outtakes that and some of them you know I don't have lines, I don't have a script and sometimes you'll lose your train of thought or you know, you'll see something stupid. And it kind of screws up the whole documentary. You have to stay focused and on attention. So, and in all pieces of those will be run at the end of the documentary, or maybe even somewhere in the middle, to just kind of break the. Uh, the when I was homeless on the streets of Hollywood, it was. The young people that, that took me in and showed me the ropes and showed me how to survive. And we all just sort of watched out for each other. I was a little I was a little older than them, so they kinda of sort of looked up to me in, in different ways and I could get them food that they couldn't get and, and Did things like show me best, the safest, best places to stay, to sleep, um, how to hustle food, and uh, basically just how to survive. And there's three kinds of the, the homeless young people. The one is the runaway that's running from usually very severe abuse back in their family.
trust you, it's the equivalent of asking a person with no legs to walk. It's, it's blatantly, it's just downright cruel because they can't do it. And that's, that's their first signal to get the hell away from you. Often get hustled. Um, 
and they often wind up hate-filled. Um, so I would highly recommend if, if, if you don't have the ability to think like the person you're trying to help, and it doesn't just have to be homeless people or homeless youth, you have to be able to think like that. Another big issue that I have that does more damage than anything is, is the occasional success story. And the organization or the person gives all the glory to the organization and it robs that person out of their own hard work and glory and they often give it to you know their religion or for themselves um, in an effort to raise money for their organization or, or whatever the spotlight goes off the actual person who had to do all the work to succeed and they're robbed of their glory and that's why so many organizations fail and that's why you have chronic homelessness and, and things like that. They deserve that glory and it really burns me up when they don't get it. So that's another issue. Um, we're going to be
your head. 